Hello everyone, welcome. This is vlog number two for uh, 19th century music, culture and performance, strand four. And um, I just want to start by having a bit of a recap over um, what happened in, in lecture number two and also look forward to lecture number three and talk about how we're moving in terms of the assignment and also the tutorials. Um, I'll start with the tutorials actually because um, I have been mentioning that um, I will be setting up tutorials to see you um, every week if you wish to you can just sign up and see me individually um, and it's a really nice way just to get to know you and also just to um, discuss your various projects and interests and um, assignments whatever you're working towards at this time that's starting this friday um i've only got a short amount of time this friday because i have to um leg it down to london well not leg it down to london but uh, you know i'll be yeah uh, i'll be catching transport um but um I need to go off uh, but I have um, made sure I've put aside um, some time um, in the afternoon so that there are tutorials um, you can sign up for so if you want to come and just talk to me about anything at all um, then please do sign up what you need to do is have a look in your Moodle page and um, it's been set up now so you'll find if you go into your classes on the Moodle page um, you'll find there is um, a class which is called Chris Worsley's tutorials and if you get into that, you can just um, find there'll be a tab that you can um, you can open up and book a tutorial to see me. Um, you don't need to have you know, fixed ideas or developed ideas to come and see me. The the idea for having the tutorials is that um, you might have quite vague ideas that you need to um, solidify a little bit and and talk about, or just come and talk about what you're doing and um, anything that's that interests you in performance. Um, I'm always happy to to see people. Though that time is there, so please come and um, sign up and and make it worth my while. Either come by yourself or bring a friend and just talk about if you've got any questions or queries or interests, anything like that please do. Um, last Friday we talked about Beethoven and as you will have recognised um, I talk about Beethoven a lot, I like talking about Beethoven uh, and when I talk about Beethoven um, it goes on a bit, we, we, we got a bit, um, uh, we went on a bit at the end and um, didn't really leave time to even leave the room at the end so um, that's a bit of a problem. Apologies for that, I, I do get very enthusiastic about Beethoven um, and my research into Beethoven's sketches was the um, was the, the main um, the main part of that lecture really to set us up for talking about recordings which is what we're going to be doing in the first assignment and which is where we're moving even closer um, in um, lecture number three uh, this next week um, and really the main point that I I think is so important to emphasize is this myth that needs busting that uh, a composition is always um, a direct emotional expression of what the composer was feeling at that given time and that just automatically the emotion pours onto the page as we saw with Beethoven really one of the most emotional composers in history even with Beethoven he's working in the way that an improviser works that they can flip in and out of different styles and as we saw all it takes for Beethoven to begin a composition is just a few notes arbitrary notes and from there he can actually style those um, and we showed from um, um, my work in Beethoven sketches how actually the same set of notes could be stylized into several different compositions compositions of completely different character and it becomes obvious that actually the emotion and the, the character of the music was the thing that came last in the process really he just got this musical idea and like an improviser at the piano working it through all different moods different emotions he set about creating a piece of music which stylistically emotionally said the things that he wanted to say but the emotion came last and that's a really important point and um, it's an important point because I do still read a lot of assignments um, from students and have a lot of conversations where the assumption is made that if a composer writes something which is a heartbreaking piece of music then they must have been devastated at the time of composition and it's an idea as I said you know I love that idea I'm quite a romantic myself it's a really nice idea unfortunately 
when you start to scrutinize the evidence on it, it simply in so many cases turns out to be false. So we can't rely on that idea that the, that the composer's expressing themselves directly. We have to look at other um, evidence as well. And that's where this kind of work really comes in. Um, in the next lecture, I've called the, the next lecture um, text, emotion and meaning. And it's really finding that um, either the musical text that we all, you know, this thing that we all work with, um, or um, a text, like a poetic text that a composer starts with, and how the composer can generate some sort of emotion and meaning um, within um, a text, and really how they transport that, how they transmit that to us through the medium of um, a, a musical text. The one thing that we can um, really count on is that the evidence from the, the text itself, the musical text, is there and we can work backwards from that and that's what I'm going to be um, talking about is the ways that we can actually get into different performance um, traditions and different styles of interpretation um, from working with the text. One of the things which is really crucial there is uh, understanding musical notation. And this is a really important point because we think that, you know, in dealing with 19th century music, we're not dealing with the medieval period. We're not dealing with a period in time which music notation was radically different in its appearance on the page from how it um, appears today. And yet actually our use of it today is really very different um, to how it was in the past. And our understanding of musical style is very different to how it was 200 years ago. And actually, uh, we've lost a lot of our interpretational um, clout and our abilities just in simply losing that sense of style. Um, and as I began to show you, and as I'll show you more this next week, understanding intricacies of notation and how notation is used in different um, eras really gives you a completely different reading um, in interpretation. And so it's really vitally important that you understand the history of um, the, the way in which we use notation and write it down in order to really understand musically what it means so that you can understand that that thing that, um, that hits your heart and um, expresses something quite profound. Um, in all of music. So that's what we're going to be looking at um, this week. Um, just one thing um, about um, recordings, because I know a couple of people have been asking me about um, choosing recordings for the next assignment. And how do you go about this? Because I'm hoping by now you've got some idea of the the musical work that you want to be writing about. Um, and you might have several recordings in mind, you might have a whole wealth of recordings that you could choose from and you think, how do I choose? Having a lot is a problem. A wealth of choice makes the choice more difficult. Um, let me make it easier for you. There's not one recording that I think works better in your favour for this assignment than any other. Some of you are thinking, does it have to be historically informed pra um, performance practice? Um, does it have to be um, something which is a, a performer who has done a lot of work with this sort of period? Well, yes, it, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And if you've got a recording which you think is particularly unstylistic for the time, that works great. If you've got a recording which um, really fits a different, more 20th century or 21st century um, tradition of performance, Please feel free to to use that. Um, there's two real elements and two questions which um, I was thinking about this and I thought, what are you really trying to um, isolate here? What are you trying to write about? Um, and the first one is when you're working um, with a recording or even in your own performance, what elements of the composition is the performer trying to dramatise within that? Is there something which is a particular historical element that they're trying to bring to life? Is there something which um, is a more personal element to them that they want to bring to life? Um, really try to think about the different ways in that in which that that piece of music could be performed, um, and 
focus on those elements that they're really bringing out. What is it that dramatizes that piece of music for that performer? What is it that dramatizes that recording? What's the thing that really hits you about it and, and gives you that sense of style? Um, that's the first question. The second question um, that you should perhaps be asking yourself at this stage is what tradition does that recording then fit into? Does it fit into a tradition of historically informed performance? Does it fit into um, a tradition of 1960s, 1970s style performance, uh, which is in many cases quite different from performance styles today? Um, and if you start to really fit that recording into a particular tradition, you can start to really really understand what was going through that composer's mind even if you don't like the recording um, and that's another point it doesn't have to be a recording that you like um, or even that you think is any good um, you can really start to try and get behind the performer's point of view and understand well maybe you don't like it maybe you don't think it works maybe you do think it works but what is it that the performer is really trying to do and what's the tradition that they're really um, attaching themselves to that's what will really um, I think get you thinking in the right direction and once you start asking those questions you'll find that you really can use any recording at all so please just choose something that you like choosing something that you like working with you've got to make this assignment a pleasure for yourself um, and if you choose a recording that quite simply you just like um, and you can work on trying to find out and question why you like it, what is it you know that really interests you, then I think that's a really good way forward to go um, with this uh, with this assignment. So we meet again this Friday. Um, as I said, it's um, text. Um, emotion and meaning and I'm going to be talking about um, three main things. I'm going to pick up on the work last week um, on Beethoven and Beethoven sketches and um, take that forward to ask questions of how a, how a composer really brings um, that musical text forward to the page that we read today. Um, we're going to be talking about um, Schubert and in particular some of Schubert's vocal music and how that relates to his instrumental music, how we can read certain meanings from different um, styles of of um, Schubert's vocal music and then take that forward into um, a Brahms symphony um, and talk about how a lot of those elements that we can learn from early 19th century music and again from understanding um, notation and the way in which um, music notation works and how it's actually published in the 19th century uh, we can start to question those details in Brahms's score in his symphonies as well and hopefully get a, a greater, stronger sense of, of meaning um, and a clearer idea of interpretational issues that we can start to use to critique a performance from that. Um, I hope that's of interest to you. Um, I think it's going to be um, a, a nice lecture to work through and hopefully um, I will try and make some more time than I did last week to really discuss a lot of these ideas with you um, rather than running out of time at the end. For now, um, I hope that uh, you're enjoying the series of, of lectures. Please do um, you know, let me know about this through any feedback. And if you want to sign up and have a tutorial and just come and talk about the lectures, please do. Those tutorials are there. They're on Moodle. I hope to see you on Friday. Have a good week. See you then.